bring in uh, Jesse Weber. He's a very smart attorney in uh, New York City. Uh, he is on the Law and Crime Network, and he analyzes high-profile criminal and civil cases in the media. So, Jesse, I, I read uh, the transcript. I couldn't bear to listen to Cohen, but I read the transcript by step put together. I don't see anything here at all that anybody could ever take into a court of law. I mean, it's all a bunch of gibberish and opinion to me. Well, even if you take what he says is true, and there's a whole issue about whether or not he's a credible witness, and yeah, he could bring some documentation like the checks, but even if you want to take what he says is true, what does that even mean? I mean, if you just talk with the hush money payments, okay. So President Trump is paying him back for these payments, okay? He's been paying him, he even directed him to make these payments. The question is, under the law, he had to have knowingly and willfully violated the law. And what did Michael Cohen say earlier today? He didn't even check himself to see if this was payment was illegal. So if President Trump's own attorney didn't even know if it was illegal, didn't tell him it was illegal, how on earth could the president himself know these payments were illegal? But that's how, a, you know, why do you write a $35,000 check when the tariff is, according to these people, 125000 a shutter up? Why would you write that? Well, the idea is he's paying, he's paying him back in installments. But as you said, why, why would a billionaire pay his own lawyer back in installments? You're a yeah, lawyer. Right. Do you get paid right. installments? I get a Maybe bill you... from my lawyer. They don't <laughs> want installments. They want the bill paid. See, look, I know. none of this yeah. stacks. None of it stacks. The stuff he said about Trump not wanting really to be president, just wanting to brand. Uh, and let me read you one more quote. He goes, this is Cohen today. Quote, to be clear, Ms. Trump knew of and directed the Trump-Moscow negotiations throughout the campaign and lied about it. He lied about it because he never expected to win the election. He also lied about it because he stood to make hundreds of millions of dollars on the Moscow real estate project. Okay. So, number one, um, unless you are elected, you can run your private enterprise. Right? So he's in charge of the Trump organization, Donald. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And yeah. It, there's so nothing he's a private citizen yeah. until he wins. Right. So he can negotiate with anybody about anything. Well, it's the not only a crime. thing. He, it's, it's not a the, violation. It's what he do. You have to make a living for your organization and your stockholders. Okay. Right. That's number one. Number two, Trump killed himself on the campaign trail. You remember the last night, the night before the vote, he did the extra trip to Michigan. I think it was midnight or something like that. Um, so uh, he never expected to win the election. Why was he doing that then? Why would he do right. that? I mean, none of it makes, doesn't hold together. You as a lawyer, I think you go in and tear this guy to pieces in cross-examination, could you not? Oh, of course. And, you know, it's good this is not kind of a courtroom. But the idea here is if he is not totally believable on one part of his testimony, why should we believe him on another part of his testimony? And, you know, the Republicans have made a great point that look at what he's been convicted of. Why should we believe him now? And he said himself, I'm going to get out of prison in three years and I will probably get a book deal or a movie deal. And that's gonna, how I'm going to survive moving forward. But, you know, the interesting thing is, is there were opportunities for him to explain something a little bit more, and he didn't. So, you know, I look at a lot of the things that he said, and again, I just don't know how the president would be in jeopardy. I mean, if you go now to the idea of being about lying to Congress, right? So he says, oh, okay. He goes, the president, he, we, we, he didn't directly tell me. He didn't directly tell me, but, you know, I knew the way he behaved. I knew how he said, I, I, I know him very well. He wanted me to lie. He said words like Russia, no Russia. Now, I got to tell you, if this were to go into a courtroom without direct evidence of the president of the United States directing him to lie to Congress, it's not going to hold up. And yes, you could build cases that it's based upon a pattern of behavior that he's been with them for a while. It's just those things are much tougher to prove in a court of law. I don't and if anybody any, knows that, any you know. case, no, no prosecutor would bring this. Um, I don't know one prosecutor, even the most liberal prosecutors in the country. I, I don't think they bring a case. And you know what? It doesn't matter because the Mueller report is all that matters. And that uh, may leak out next week. Um, but Cohen, this is his three days. Um, I, I, I don't I got to tell you, I, I, and I'm not saying this with any um, with any 
desire to prop up President Trump, I think it's just a disgrace that we are in a country now there that television networks will give a Michael Cohen who everybody knows is a charlatan. All right. All this time while the president of the United States is doing something pretty important in Hanoi. And, and it, you know, to me, it's like, OK, who's next? You know, whoever comes out then gets on Good Morning America, whatever. And they say whatever they want, unchallenged, uh, Jussie Smollett. Oh, yes, it's so terrible. Um, and we're living in that kind of nation. And I, I think there's going to be a backlash. I'm going to talk about that in a little while. So you agree with me that so far, and two, we are now two days in, that Michael Cohen has not damaged President Trump at all. Well, I mean, he's damaged his reputation for people who are following this. And, and the idea is, look, but can wait, prosecutors... Wait, wait, wait. What has he said that's damaged his reputation? Is it already damaged to the extent that has he done more damage to it? So that's a great question. It depends upon who you ask. People who are anti-Trumpers, it's just adds fuel to the fire. And I don't think people that support Donald Trump would look at what Michael Cohen is saying and they would change their opinion. But do you really want to hear that this man's going forward and calling the president of the United States a racist and a con man? I mean, that's terrible. Right. And, and, but I will say I will say this much that as a, a prosecutor and by the way, you talked about the Mueller report. I believe that, you know, and there's all a question if we'll even get that report to see. But even if the summary comes out, there are going to be pieces of Michael Cohen's testimony that are there. So the idea of, you know, the Trump Tower Moscow meeting or the Trump Tower meeting, the idea of and there might not be anything illegal per se about that, but that it goes into a larger story of Russian collusion or the Mueller probe. Yeah, that that commentary might be in there. Um, but in terms of legal jeopardy, based upon what Michael Cohen said, yeah, they could try to make a case. But I just see a lot of loopholes in it. And I, I think anybody who's looking objective would, would see the same thing. You know, and, and even in Congress, I know they're, they're the impeachment crew, um, which Pelosi is not going to allow, at least at this point. Um, they would like to use some of Cohen, but I don't think they even have one thing that Cohen said that they could use for any impeachment. Did you see anything that the House could use uh, to draw up articles? Well, if they want to say that he violated campaign finance laws, they could try to say that's an impeachable that offense, but I fly. think I would think it would be an uphill battle. I mean, there's two ways that I see that, by the way. It's not just the hush money payments. There's another argument. I think this one's interesting, is that even if, you know, the idea that President Trump knew about Stone and Assange is the idea that while he was receiving something of value from a Russian national, the idea of these hacked emails, that's a tenuous argument, but it's an argument that could try to be made. It's I just don't much, think look, there's enough you can't there. Convict, if you can't convict a sitting president for perjury when he clearly perjured himself, Bill Clinton. Right. <laughs> this stuff is not getting, not going to get anywhere. All right, yeah. Jesse, thanks very much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. 